Hello and welcome back to maybe the most important episode of Joe's Arcade. That's right. This time around we're actually going to put the arcade games in the machine. Um, it's going to be a pretty straightforward process but definitely should be documented and I can uh, kind of show how you get things from the 3D warehouse as well. So starting inside here obviously this is what the room is looking like currently and uh, what I'm going to be working off of for placement is just this video that I've taken of where the different games are. So pretty much just going to be moving them in at this point. Uh, there will be a little bit of eyeballing the dimensions and then as some of the last details get you know brought in artwork and um, you know maybe some furniture and things like that I'll probably end up fine-tuning their position a little bit more but without spending too long here um, looking at this I'm gonna also pull up one other sheet of notes that I think might be useful let me guess that it is Scan02 but it's probably not probably wrong on that I am let's try Scan03 also wrong it's the last thing I did um, I've, what I'm looking for here is a couple of these dimensions that are um, just for some of the, the furniture objects it's going to be a little bit difficult to discern which is which on the fly but we're going to we're going to use those to inform some of the placement decisions here so anyway um, last thing before I actually get going I'm going to be running Corey Wong's motivational music for the syncopated soul new album that just came out and there's a YouTube playlist that I'll link in the description and that's going to be what I'm listening to in the background so let us get on with it then okay so if I actually come out here to look outside you'll see I've got pretty much all the arcade games already downloaded it wasn't gonna uh, sit through the process here on a recording of downloading them all but essentially uh, different people in the SketchUp community have 3d modeled a lot of these cabinets um, and uh, they're available for free download on the SketchUp warehouse. I've got a list over here that I just kind of wrote down all the names and went in and found them all. There are a few uh, discrepancies here or games that weren't out there. So um, there's a game called Blaster that's not here yet. The model for that was Corrupt that I was able to find. And then um, one other title, Mazer Blazer. There just wasn't a, a model of, uh, around for that. And then we've also got uh, this one. Where's that at? Major Havoc. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, this Major Havoc game, I was able to find a model for, but it's not the exact model that's actually in the arcade. And I think there was one other one other little thing I ran into here, this Aka R. Um, found a model that appears to look correct but it's not at the uh, the exact right scale so I'll have to make some adjustments to that so what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna just step down the line of these games and um, and uh, go ahead and actually clean them up in just a couple places get rid of some of that there's not going to be a whole lot to do there but before I do that I do just kind of want to show you how this um, process of getting a game works so um, all I had to do to get these is go from file to the 3d warehouse click get models and then it'll pull up kind of it's basically a database of all sorts of uh, free models out there for use that have been created by people and uh, for example I can type in turkey shoot arcade game and nothing will come up because I spelled turkey wrong there we go turkey shoot arcade game and you can see uh, there's two different models here this one by Gozer, who's done most of the modeling for these, uh, is available. Um, and look at that. 
all measurements and arts supplied by Joe M. So it's kind of an interesting collaborative thing where Joe of Joe's Arcade has actually gone out and um, he's sent measurements of some of these cabinets off to the guy who's done this, this 3D modeling prior to me getting involved with the room. So to get a game like this, all you have to do is hit download and then you can load it directly into the model. And there we go. There's uh, Turkey Shoot. Now, of course, I've already got a copy of that, so I'll delete it. But that's what I went through to get all of these in the model. So, stepping down like I said I was going to do. Just take a look, and if there's anything major with the game, I'll clean it up. So, Marble Madness looks fine, I'd say. Um, Turkey Shoot has got this stray stuff. I'll clean that up. I think that one's looking fine. Bubbles is looking all right. This one was a little bit difficult to find, I'll say. Looks like there might be something weird going on here. I would say, yeah, maybe that's right. Hmm. What I'm seeing here is it seems like there's a, like a very minusculely thin section there that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I think something is missing. A couple lines here. Yep. That would seem to be correct. I'm going to see if there's anything I can do with the view to make this easier to see. Let's go just shaded edges. New face style or hidden line. Nope, that's not working. Face style. Yeah, actually that does work. So yeah, I can see here that there's um, a little bit of a missing face there, which is an issue definitely. Let's go ahead and extend this face. And of course this cabinet is skewed off of a simple angle here so we can adjust that okay there we go something weird with that um, hitbox as well oh it's got a local coordinate system defined in it as a, as a component so let's go ahead and change our component axes to be in line with the model. And it didn't work. Excellent. Let me try again. Change axes. Yep, yep. Ah, there we go. It's got another origin. The way this is modeled, obviously is different than how I may have guessed it was set up which is always something you run into when you work with other people's stuff without fail I didn't create a face there there's a like a component inside of a component here obviously I'm not trying to make a working copy of the game here I'm just trying to make it visually look correct But to do that, I do need to get this in here. Let's bring that up to this point. And let's bring that down to that point. You'll see it's created faces here, which is what I wanted. Shouldn't need that. Nope, I do need that face though, and I'm not going to mess with the model so much. Don't need that, or that, or that. Okay. Still a little bit of a hole here, but I will say that's something that nobody's ever going to really be looking at. So 
So I'm not super concerned with perfecting that portion. Yeah, we're going to undo that and not mess with that too much. The game overall looks looks pretty good. And we'll go back to a face style of shaded with textures. It's going to take a moment to regen there. I'm going to get in here and I'm not even going to run an orient faces command here because I don't know what it's going to wreak mayhem wise on the rest of the model. I'll just reverse these faces so they are correct. There we go. And I've got a whole bunch more textures in this model now, that's for sure. I'm going to do my texture picker to grab the correct color for these faces here. And there we go. Obviously, you'll start to notice some performance issues with the model too, I think. But it's running pretty well. There's just a lot more data in it now than there was before. Anyway, I'd say Bubbles is... Cleared up, Wacko is looking pretty good. Hubert's Cubes is pretty good. It's a, maybe a slightly different version uh, than what's in the arcade, although it's a dual Hubert and Hubert's Cubes cabinet, so it, it kind of fits. Uh, Black Widow is looking good. Missile Command looks pretty good. Food Fight, I noticed this has got a um, like a dual face here, so hopefully. Uh, that didn't work. Hopefully there's like an extra face, yeah, covering that Food Fight logo. Don't know how that got in there, obviously, but it's dealt with now. Major Havoc looks good. This Rampart looks pretty good, but I think it might have... It's got something going on here. Ah, the image texture is got a little bit of a, a line there. You see what we've got going on for our rampart texture. This just is an image, so it's not going to be something that I can um, edit really well, I don't think. Just scrolling down to see if I happen to see it here, but I can actually grab my material picker and it is an image. Let's go down to the edit here. Um, where is this thing? Parts heal four. I'd like to edit this thing if it's possible to do so. Here I've got a uh, copy of it. And I could save a copy of this thing under Joe's Arcade Textures. Rampart Controls. And I can come over here in paint then, good old trusty paint. And I'll just try opening that textures rampart controls. Just to see if there's a, a line here or anything like that. And I'll tell you what I'm not seeing is any evidence that, that there is like a single pixel line around the edge that might be forming this border. I think just is a artifact of how SketchUp does transparency with images. So I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I'm gonna have to leave it without doing a pretty major rework of the cabinet. Uh, the way that's modeled and textured. So we've got iRobot here. Let me just tell you about one other thing. I 
should give up on this, but hard for me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's as as clean as it's gonna get. Um, I robot looks pretty good. Quantum looks pretty good. Let's see, Journey is looking good. Aka R, I know is a little too large. And if I come into my video footage, I can actually go to where that is, and I think I can scale that relatively here. If I just look and I see it's shorter than Tempest, or should be, I can scale that guy. I'll go 0.95. Hmm. Point nine three, and I'd say comparatively that looks to be about the right height. Uh, honestly, point nine five. Let's go ninety four. Good compromise. I think that looks about right. Obviously, we'll see if it fits in the room. Uh, then we have got Tempest, which looks fine, and then we've got a whole bunch of pinball machines, which all look pretty good. Yes, indeed. Okay, so now let's go back over to our main model and hit my layers. I'm going to turn off the ceiling. Uh, I can't hide the current layer, which I will say means that then all of these are on that layer. So I'll put them, I'll create a new layer called games. Um, I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to move them on to games. And I will turn off ceiling. One thing that's just struck me is yes. That work that I just did on bubbles got drawn, as you may expect, on the ceiling layer. So I'm going to move it to the games layer. Now I can turn off ceiling and that the games look fine. Okay, so let's begin this process of actually moving them in then, eh? So if I go back to my video, I can see Agent X and Marble Madness are next to each other in this back corner here. Um, I also know from my PDF here that there is a file cabinet that's 18 inches uh, wide in that corner. So let's take Agent X. And I'll grab that point so I can snap it to the floor here. going to take advantage of my the view abilities I've got with this mouse to do that as a single operation. And let's move this guy out. Fits in pretty nicely there. Oh, look at that. If I turn the ceiling, all of these wonderful pieces of conduit are on the ceiling layer as well. It should be on details. That's inconvenient. I think that may that may require some attention and maybe we'll work with the ceiling on for now. And that'll get some attention in between videos here. So I'll take that and I'll move this 18 inches. That's where Agent X belongs. And Marble Madness goes right next to it. Move that in like so. And it 
would have to be, let's move it an inch out so I'm not hitting those. Let's move this guy an inch out as well. And just roughly, I'm putting it there. There's not a whole lot of room between these. You know, per my uh, per my video here. So yeah, they're pretty close together. And we'll turn the corner here in a second. Let's see what our next game is. Turkey shoot. Turkey shoot looks like it belongs. Oh, pretty much right on the edge of this door frame. So let's go get that one. Bring turkey shoot in here. And just move it down to some point along this to make sure it's in the right spot. And I will rotate this one 90 degrees. And put it there, but it actually is like here. So let's move that 1.5 inches over. Pretty tight quarters in here. And I'll move it an inch across like that. Perfect. What have we got next? I think it is millipede. Yep, millipede and then bubbles. I do have them more or less in order already. Let's move both of those in. Millipede needs 180 degree rotation as does Bubbles. And we will move this, as usual, to our baseboard. And then out some. Oh, it's getting crazy. Let's just move it like that. Corners are a little bit tricky here. Let's move him into the wall and into the wall. And then I'll move it back out an inch and an inch. How does that work here? I would say that's pretty good. And now bubbles. Let's move bubbles like this. I'll grab that. And I'll just smack it in. I'll move that there and then an inch out. And then it is pretty much right up against millipedes, so I'm going to give it a quarter inch gap there. Next up we have Wacko. Let's go get that one. And I'm going to turn my ceiling off after all, just to make it easier to work. It's getting crowded in here. Rotate that 180 degrees. And ooh, this has some uh, feet on it, which the others did not have. I'll pick that up and I'm going to snap these feet to the bottom. And I want to snap this to. there. I'll move it out our inch. Move it over. And again, we're like right on top of things here, so 
we'll go a quarter of an inch. And blaster goes in next. That's one that I was not able to procure a model for. Mazer Blazer, same thing. And at some point those might become available here. Um, and hopefully we can get them in. But that does mean that Cubert's Cubes is kind of the next one. Move that to there. I'm going to line it up like that and see if they're about the same width. They sure are. So I think my strategy here for aligning these is pretty much going to be to figure these cabinets are fairly close in dimensions. Obviously we have space for somebody to um, walk past here. Am I getting Got a couple Windows Explorers open that I don't need. Uh, Major Blazer goes, Mazer Blazer goes there. With a little bit of a gap here. Between that cabinet, so you can walk past. Let's call it two feet. And then I'm going to copy Cubert, kind of like its own width. And this should be, you know, about in front of the door, which it is. So I'd say that's pretty good. Blaster is next to Black Widow. Which is next to Missile Command. Preemptively rotate this. And that. Move that in as well. Ooh, that's not at the right spot. And this is working pretty easily to align these. I'll do that. And that, snap those to the floor. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it into the wall. I'll move it out an inch. Same thing with that. this over here and I'll move it over a quarter inch and I'm gonna just kinda leave a gap here for where blaster should be. I'll keep adding games and then I will smash these over into the corner and I think that ought to work uh, just fine until we get that cabinet in it'll look about right. Got Major Havoc and Rampart then are next to each other Ninety. Ninety. Move those in. Major Havoc is a pretty fun game. That's one of my favorites. And hey, these are both even aligned correctly on the uh, on the floor. So let's move Havoc over to the wall, an inch, to the wall, and an inch, And this one is going to take a little bit more thought because it's got this like big wide panel here. 
So there actually does have to be some level of a gap. Oh, unless I pull that panel out a little bit, which it looks like it's probably more what's going on. So if I pull this to here, then I can move this over. And yeah, I think that's more in line with what's happening here. Point two five. Then we've got iRobot. And we probably do have an inch, though, I would say. And obviously, this is not the exact major havoc cabinet, which is making a difference here, I think, as far as this clearance is concerned. It looks much more like this iRobot, or should. This isn't a bad start. Okay, so we've got iRobot. Let me check the floor on this one. Seems right. To the wall, an inch. And we got an auto save going. This is another one here where really the it's not a uniform size, so Let's move that to here. And I'm gonna give that a half an inch. Food Fight, Quantum, and Journey are next. Food Fight's out here. That'd be Quantum. And Journey. Well, let's move all of them in. You've got a pretty similar design to them. No feet at the bottom, right? Now, Food Fight has a little bit of a bevel here. Almost would be easier to work this with the uh, the walls off. An inch. Let's do that. Then I can just line up backs to backs. Quantum, I've gotten the wrong spot. That's food fight spot. Bring that over to the edge of iRobot here and then see how far I have to move it. Let's go an inch. Uh, that's too far. Half an inch. Looks good. Point two five. And journey. And point two five. Okay, and I think our last two 
or aka R. And Tempest. And that is correct. Those are not truly back to back. Let's go 90 and 90. that and that I'll move that to there that to there I'll make my quarter inch adjustment that adjustment And there we go. We've got that line, and now we can make our adjustment for a blaster, which is missing. By taking these, moving them to the edge of the room here, and then back over an inch. And there's our hole for our game. Might have some room to space them out a little bit more once that's in, but this is pretty close to what we want to have. All right, so next up here, or last up-ish here, we have got our pinball machines. So let's move those over. And in the interest of continued efficiency, I think I'm going to move these all up to floor elevation right away. So bring that one up. And they may even be at it, but... It, you can never really tell, so it's always worth just running the double check. And that one. And this one. Now, of course, because these go along the wall, they're actually backwards from what they should be in terms of placement. Or are they? Yes, I think they are. So I will have to work left to right for laying these in. I think what I can do is I can also line them all up. Um, you know, far back point to far back point. Should be here on this one. kind of making up an, an invisible wall. If I had been smart enough to do this with the uh, arcade games, or the, the cabinets, it would have been a little bit easier, huh? But you live and learn. That's kind of neat. Caution warnings on the back of them. Never transport a pinball game with the hinged black box erect. Yeah, that probably would be a way to damage it. Let's go ahead and reorg these into the order they should be as well. This is some pretty complicated moving I'm doing right now. I'm going to double check my work with the video. But 
think we should have Star Trek, Monster Bash, Wizard of Oz, Revenge from Mars, Attack from Mars, Circus Voltaire, and Arabian Nights. Yes, I should say that worked pretty well. And one thing I didn't neglected to kind of look at here was what sort of gap we've got between these things. They're pretty tight as well. Maybe like half inch or something like that would be a good starting place. I'm going to begin here by just moving them all over. And I'll look for clashes in a second, like major clashes. Here they are, kind of all crammed together. And let's see, it doesn't look like there's conflicts down lower. So this, the score boxes are going to be my limiting factor here. So I can move this over to the corner here where the wall is going to be, then move it over an inch. Now I'll move my kind of fake wall section to the real wall and move it in an inch and looks like we've got that pretty well and there's not a whole lot of extra room here. Move that half an inch Give them all like half an inch to spare. See what that does. And we've got a clash there. So there's even less than a half inch of clearance. There's maybe, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch or something like that. But I can take three of these and move them a quarter inch over. Just do a lesser spacing on those. Get clear of the outlet there. And I'd say that's plenty adequate for this. Bring my walls back in, see how I did. I think that looks pretty good. Let's get the SketchUp man out of the way. You can see just from the camera trying to navigate in here, it is pretty tight. Um, we'll get a little bit of furniture in maybe and, and really fill up the blank spaces that are left, but this is a pretty good impression of what it would look like to be in the room, especially if I put the ceiling on come back here and kind of look look that way at it yeah so there we go those are the arcade games except for the really just the two that um, there weren't models for pulled in and uh, and organized so hopefully this has been somewhat worth the wait and we'll um, you know, keep adding a few more details here, but this room is, is looking pretty good, looking pretty wrapped up. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Joe's Arcade.